Got a big one going in the water. Hey guys, it's Jeff with another episode of our 1999 Carver 356. We've been busy getting the boat ready for the water and we took a lot of great video, but I wanted to jump ahead and show you the good stuff. You see, we bought this Carver outside of Chicago in Seneca, Illinois, and we needed to get it back to our marina in Prairie du Chien, Wisconsin. There's a couple ways to do it. One is by truck, but that's no fun. We thought we better drive it over 700 miles down the Illinois and up the mighty Mississippi. So let's get started. I live in Eastern Iowa, but our marina is in Prairie du Chien, Wisconsin. The boat we purchased was in Seneca, Illinois, which is roughly three hours driving in my car to get there. The quickest way to drive there is down Interstate 80 and through the Quad Cities. Now I could have gotten a semi and putting the boat on the semi, but you have to take it apart. You have to disassemble it. The top's got to come off, and then you have to reassemble it. It's only about an hour from Seneca to the Quad Cities. We could have paid for a semi, truck it to the Quad Cities, reassemble it in the Quad Cities, and then go up north from the Quad Cities on the Mississippi. But what fun is that? And it's really expensive. We decided the better option was to actually pilot the boat down the Illinois, to a little town called Grafton, Illinois, and then come all the way up the Mississippi to Prairie du Chien. By the way, there's about 25 lock and dams and multiple railroad bridges that you have to navigate, but it really is the best way to familiarize yourself with your new boat. So I figured it was gonna take eight to 10 days to get this boat back to Iowa. Luckily, I had a friend that wanted to ride along the first half of the week, and then my wife was going to join me once we got down to Grafton. So we headed out late on the first day. We got a late start, but we got on the water, and it looked a little something like this. Sean. Hi everybody, Sean. Hi Sean. Hey, so does that rope need to come down? Is it hung up? No, that thing he'll drop. So if you've ever been through a lock and dam, there's lots of types, but this one had floats that went up and down with the water so you could tie off onto them. We went through two lock and dams that first day. This is going through the second one before we got to our destination. And then the second day, we actually go through a wicket dam that I'll show you a little later. The stop our first night was at Spring Valley Boat Club. We were only in the water about three hours, but we were told by the previous marina not to go past it because there wasn't going to be anything until Peoria. So we stopped about 5.30 at night, had a pizza, a few beers, took a shower, and getting ready for the next full day. We we're going to be on the water a full eight hours. All right, just leaving our first night. First full day. A lot of barges along the river. 
what was the name of that marina? Spring, uh, Spring Grove, Spring, Spring Valley, Spring Valley Marina. I would recommend. chilly again this morning gotta have the coat and hat on so we had one fatal flaw when we left that morning we did not fuel up so here we are on the upper Peoria Lake looking for a marina that has fuel luckily we found the Illinois Valley Yacht and Canoe Club but to me it was a little more like the place in Caddyshack and I was Rodney Dangerfield Yeah, I could park my car, get my bags, and put on some weight, will you? Hey, Wang, what's with the pictures? It's a parking lot. Come on, will you? I think this place is restricted, Wang, so don't tell me you're Jewish. Okay, fine. So all kidding aside, the marina was closed, but they did allow us to fuel up. So they directed us to this bar across the street where we were able to get a couple drinks and lunch. And then we were on our way. Yep. All right, we're in the uh, Peoria Lock and Dam, and this is a wicket dam, and we just called the lock, and they said uh, the wickets are down and to proceed on the uh, starboard side. So that's what we're going to do, and hopefully we don't hit shit. So the famous wicket dams on the Illinois River that all the other loopers talk about. Nothing fancy to look at. But uh, we called them on channel 16. They moved us to 14. They said the wickets are down. Proceed on the starboard side and just pass on through. So as long as I don't, I got uh, 12 feet of depth. So as long as I don't hit nothing, I'll be good. Here we go. Kind of scary. I've heard about the Wicked Dams. I've never gone through one. Yeah, see, this is all blocked off on uh, Navionics. Okay. Doesn't show it, but it's all blocked off because you're not supposed to come this way unless they tell you to. Because that's the lock and dam over there. So we got a break. So right about, time. yeah, right about here is where the wickets are. And all they really do is just hold back the water. They don't stop the water completely, but it holds it back. So there's a couple foot drop. And uh, yeah, we went through, we're over. Wickets are down. Roger, Roger. Roger, Abby. Roger, Abby. So this is our first full day on the water. And for the middle of April, our weather was really great. We got some great video, but one thing I'll say about the Illinois is it's really a commercial river. We really didn't see any recreational boats on the water the entire time, except for maybe one or two flat bottom small fishing boats as we got closer down south uh, towards St. Louis. The other thing about the Illinois is there's not a whole lot of channel markers for all of the commercial traffic that's there, but it's heavily, heavily barge traffic and it's not that wide. Unloading the grain elevator for the grain barge. Lots of barges on the river today. Lots of barges, one coming right at us. Now that we had a full tank of gas, we still had a long way to go to get to our next overnight stop at Havana, Illinois. So we kept the boat up on plane most of the day. Of course, pretty new to the boat, and we did find some problems. We were having some transmission problems. We were having some engine problems, but we made it eventually to our Havana in a nice little place called the Tall Timbers Marina. This is a great little marina. I would love to see what this thing would be like in the summertime when it's full of people. So here we had to say goodbye to Sean and trade out my crew for my wife and Todd and Tawny. They joined me for the next leg of our adventure all the way down to Grafton.
One of the things I loved about this trip were all the train bridges. A lot of them raised up, some of them swinged open, some of them you had to call and have them open the bridge for you. But to me, these are really interesting and one of the things I loved about this trip. All right, we're about five miles from Grafton, coming into Grafton. We got a little, uh, little more hilly. I actually got a little more scenic here as we get close to Mississippi. Pretty flat otherwise, and uh, pretty much not much to look at. So there's actually hills, little bluffs, a little more entertaining. Oh, that's okay. We're going right over that flag. That flagpole, that's our spot? Oh. Now you see the bluffs? I will when we get a little closer. Okay. I'm not going to give them that big of a head on itself. Pretty, though. That's that is pretty. That's, you got the flag? That's, that's Mississippi looking. That's, yeah. that's, uh... yeah. Yeah. So it took us two and a half days to get to Grafton, Illinois from Seneca, where the Mississippi River on the left and the Illinois River on the right converge. The town of Grafton itself, if you haven't been there, highly recommend it. Stop by. The marina is right here at the mouth of the convergence. It's a great town, and as the sign says, it's the Mardi Gras of the Midwest. There are bars littering the street everywhere. It's a fun time. A lot of people from St. Louis went there for the weekend. We just happened to hit it on a Saturday. Crazy busy, crazy fun. The marina's great. Highly recommend it. I'll probably do a separate video on the actual town and what we did. So I'm probably gonna leave it off here and watch our next video where we start going up the mouth of the Mississippi all the way up to Prairie du Chien, Wisconsin. It actually gets a little crazier from here, so stay tuned and I'll see you next time.